Hello, this is Michael Chang, and in this video, we're going to talk about subject verb agreement as well as some tricky subject verb agreement scenarios. There's also a transcript of this video below so you can read it and look at the examples at your own pace. So, first, what is subject verb agreement? In short, subject verb agreement is where singular subjects take singular verbs and plural subjects take plural verbs. Here are two very simple examples. Number one, John walks to the store. John is a singular subject, so we need to match it with the singular verb walks. Number two, Jack and John walk to the store. Jack and John is a plural subject, so we need to match it with the plural verb walk. Pretty simple, right? Well, unfortunately, there are some tricky subject verb agreement scenarios, which we will cover here in this video. Tricky scenario number one. The subject and the verb are separated by several words. Take a look at the following example here. The room with the flowers is or are absolutely beautiful. Here, if we're not careful, we might think that the subject is flowers, which is plural and would match with the verb are. However, the actual subject here is room, which is the first noun in the subject phrase. Room is singular, so it should match with the singular verb is. The noun that you should match with the verb should be the first noun in the subject phrase. So make sure you always trace the subject phrase all the way back to the beginning before matching it with a verb. Tricky scenario number two. Collective nouns can be either singular or plural. Take a look at the following example. The group of students is or are walking to class. Here, group is the subject, and group is singular, so we should match with the verb is. But the problem is, it can be easy to get confused here because the word group looks like it should be plural because a group consists of more than one thing. There are several other words like the word group that usually take singular verbs such as class, family, committee, and staff. And unfortunately, it gets even more tricky because sometimes these collective nouns can actually be plural if they're referring to individuals within the group, such as in the following sentence here. The class is or are tuning their instruments. But here's the trick. If you can add the word members after the verb, the verb is going to be plural. So for example, the class members is or are tuning their instruments. Tricky scenario number three. A plural subject joined by and might be separated by a lot of words. Take a look at the following example here. The old store at the corner of the street that sold delicious muffins and the building at the far end of the university is or are going to be renovated next year. Here, there are two different subjects that are joined together by the conjunction and, so they need to take a plural verb, are. This example can be tricky though because there are so many words that separate the subjects from one another and from the verb. Tricky scenario number four. Singular indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns that end in one, such as anyone, everyone, no one, and someone. That end in body, such as everybody, somebody, and nobody. And thing, such as everything, something, and nothing. As well as the word each are singular and always take singular verbs. For example, we would write the following. Everyone is or are sitting in his or their seat, nobody has or have fallen down, and finally, each of the animals is or are unique. These indefinite pronouns can be tricky because some of them look like they should be plural, especially everyone, everybody, everything, and each. Take a look at the first example sentence here. A lot of people will want to write, everyone is sitting in their seat. But this isn't proper English because everyone is singular and there is plural. Also, take a look at the third example sentence here. The word each is usually followed by something plural, in this case of the animals, which is plural. But although we'll probably feel very tempted to give it a plural verb because that seems to sound right, it needs to take a singular verb. Tricky scenario number five. Indefinite pronouns that depend on the context. The indefinite pronouns all, some, none, either, and neither can be either singular or plural, depending on the context. Take a look at the following examples here. 
all slash some slash none of the cake has or have been eaten, all slash some slash none of the pieces has or have been eaten, neither the cats nor the dog is or are here, either the cats or the dog is or are guilty, neither the cat nor the dogs is or are here, either the cat or the dogs is or are guilty. For the indefinite pronouns all, some, and none, we need to see if what they're referring to is singular or plural. In our examples here, cake is singular and pieces is plural. For the indefinite pronouns either and neither, they're going to almost always take singular verbs even though we're going to be very tempted to give them plural verbs because they're referring to more than one thing. The only scenario where they would take plural verbs is if the second noun is plural, the noun that is closer to the verb. And finally, tricky scenario number six. The subject comes after the verb. Take a look at these three examples. Number one, there is a man in the house. Number two, there are men in the house. And number three, over the hills is an enormous cloud. In the first example, man, which is singular, is the subject, so the verb should be the singular is. In the second example, men, which is plural, is the subject, so the verb should take the plural verb are. And finally, in the third example, cloud, which is singular, is the subject, so the verb should be the singular is. So, that's all we're going to cover for subject verb agreement here in this video. And if you know all of these tricky scenarios, you'll be able to identify and correct almost every single subject verb agreement error you will ever encounter.